All right, in this chapter, we're going to talk about chest, abdominal, and pelvic injuries. I'm going to focus more on the chest injuries. I'll talk a little bit about the abdominal injuries. Um, I won't be able to get through the whole, in cha the whole chapter, so if you need additional information, um, you can use your book to get more information. But I'm going to just hit some of the more common ones listed in the chapter. So with chest injuries, we have open and we have closed injuries. Those are two main categories. A lot of times with the open, it's some sort of um, stabbing. Some sort of object has been impaled in the person. Or you have a gunshot. So maybe the bullet is leaving, but you have some sort of open wound at the site. It's supposed to be a U right there. I know it's hard to read. So um, with the... And, and it may even lead to some sort of rib um, fractures. So let's also talk about um, closed injury. So with the closed, we have the skin is not broken. And a lot of times what's going to happen here is you have some sort of blunt force trauma. So some sort of blunt trauma to the site. Uh, this happens a lot of times in car accidents where somebody doesn't have their steering wheel or doesn't have their seat belt on, they hit the steering wheel. Um, it can cause uh, blunt force trauma injuries to the chest. In fact, a lot of times in crash te tests, they measure things on um, inches of deflection on how far the chest is pushed in. And the steering wheel, just in a 30 mile per hour crash, can um, cause a lot of deflection. I think around two inches of deflection, something like that, inch and a half, two inches deflection, which can damage the heart. So um, a lot of times with these rib fractures that are part of chest injuries that we're talking about here, you have um, the upper ribs are kind of protected. So your upper ribs, uppermost ribs, are protected by muscles and supported by muscles so often you don't get too much of an injury to those because they're supported by the muscle and the lower lower ribs are floating or what they call the floating ribs they have a little bit more range of motion they can move around a little bit more it's typically your injuries are going to happen to the side side of the ribs when you get a rib injury and this can really make it tough for an individual to breathe when um, they have a broken rib. And that's exactly how you'll recognize it. So let's go ahead and how do you recognize when somebody has a rib injury? And when I'm talking about rib injuries, these are also classified as chest injuries. Recognize. So you recognize when somebody has a, a rib injury where they'll have a sharp pain. So when they try to breathe, I put breathing over here. So when they try to breathe, they end up having a sharp pain. When, when they try to breathe, they'll have tenderness when you apply pressure. So it's very tender at the site of injury. Oops. So if you've ever seen somebody with a rib injury, it can be pretty bad. I, I saw an individual one time separate the cartilage between their ribs because they twisted too far. And uh, they were in extreme pain. And you may see shallow breathing. So all of those are signs that somebody has some sort of rib injury. And how do you care for it? So let's talk about care for rib fractures. So the first thing you want to do is try to get the, the victim comfortable. Comfortable as possible. They're going to be in, in a lot of pain. You'll take a soft pillow. Large. It's probably going to have to be a large pillow because you're going to wrap it around the injury site. 
and uh, you don't want to make the the um, bindings too snug so you don't want to wrap it down too tight so not too tight on the binding or the bandage if you want to classify it as that so you don't want it too snug um, if you have some sort of pain medication that would be good because they're going to be an extreme pain almost any uh, rib injury I've ever seen I don't I don't think I've ever seen anybody just walk around and not know they have a rib injury it's pretty painful a lot of nerves at that site so that you know and almost any movement you make is going to affect them because it requires you to use your core to move and that's where a lot of the muscles are attached at um, definitely want to seek a medical attention or medical care because it's not going to get better on its own. You, you know, a lot of times, you know, I mentioned um, separation of the cartilage between the rib cage. I had, we were practicing one time, and one of the individuals during that practice practice session separated his cartilage between his ribs, and uh, he could not move, and he was in pain for months. But there wasn't a lot they could do for him because you really can't set the 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 bone. Well, the bone wasn't broken; it was the cartilage in between them just kind of let it heal back on its own so um, let's also talk about and I kind of separated this out actually let me move over here I give me more room flail chest is another type of chest injury and that may sound kind of funny to you but what's happening is you have several broken ribs in the same area so you have several broken ribs in the same area and you get what's called paradoxal movement paradoxical movement essentially what this is is as the person breathes the area over the injury site moves in one direction while the rest of the chest wall so the chest wall moves in the other or the opposite direction so essentially what you have is as the person starts to breathe let's say here's where the rib injury is this part goes this way as the rest of the chest wall is expanding so you've got the injury site going one way chest wall going the other and what you can do this makes it really hard for them to breathe so hard to breathe mainly because it's painful how you can recognize this is with that paradoxical movement at your chief sign your your main sign that you have a flail chest injury is that the par that you have paradoxical movement you've got the injury site going in one direction and the rest of the chest wall going the other you're also going to have some bruising and the bruising even if it just happened is probably going to happen fairly fast and it's going to be very painful to breathe So how do you care for this? To provide care, you can apply your hand pressure if it's for the short, short term. So if you're waiting on EMS to arrive and you know they're going to arrive pretty soon, you can apply hand pressure. Um, if it's going to be a while, you try to get a, the, the victim in a comfortable position and place them, place the victim on their side with a blanket or soft pillow underneath the injured area 
inside with soft. Let's just put blanket. Whatever you have that's soft. I know I'm kind of writing sideways. It's just how I'm setting in relation to my computer. I'll try to straighten that up a little bit. <laughs> So that's for flail chest. It's, you've got paradoxical movement. You can apply hand pressure if you're waiting on EMS to arrive, but it's going to be a while. Place a victim on their side um, and make sure you get medical care. So medical care is extremely important. I don't want to go over on time. I think I'm already um, getting close to running out of time. Let me move this up real quick. So I've got some room to write. Real quickly, let's talk about abdominal injuries. I'm not going to be able to go through all of them. So with abdominal injuries, you're going to have open and closed, just like we had with the chest injuries. Um, so skin's broken here. Um, you have some something penetrating, uh, most likely. Internal injuries, uh, most likely with either one of these. And um, with the clothes, the skin's not broken, so I'm just, and it's probably some sort of blunt object. I've seen people, especially if you watch some of the fights nowadays, where somebody takes a liver kick on the right hand side, and uh, they end up having abdominal injuries uh, because the liver at is covered by a portion of the ribs, but it's also uh, not covered on the bottom portion of the liver, so. A lot of strikers will attack that area and, and try to give a liver shot to take somebody out in a fight. So um, you may, especially if it's open, you're going to have, well, it'd have to be open, protruding organs. And if that happens, you want to cover them up. So um, you're probably going to have to treat the person for shock. And definitely call 911. The reason you're covering them up so that the internal organs don't get dirty and or damaged. So impaled object, pretty easy. I'm gonna go through this fast. So impaled object, don't pull it out. Try to stabilize it. And then call 911. You may have to shorten it too. And we talked about that in, in another chapter. And then sucking chest wounds. So a lot of times will happen with gunshot victims. It's pretty common, especially in the military. Um, blood bubbling out. Sometimes the lungs will collapse, especially if they penetrated the lungs. And then you have a well, sucking sound. So what you want to do, you can cover that up with uh, plastic wrap and keep it from sucking air in and out. Anyway, that's real quick. I'm almost out of time. So there's a lot more to that chapter. Go through and read it, especially about the pelvic injuries. Uh, the main thing there is you're probably going to have to treat them for shock. Um, you may have to place a, a pad between the victim's thighs and um, then tie the victim's knees and ankles together and then and keep the victim on a firm surface and then call 911. So main reason is we don't want it to cause any more damage um, if they have some sort of pelvic fracture because of the internal organs that are um, housed inside or a portion of the internal organs that are housed inside the pelvic cavity. So I hope this was useful for you, and I'll see you in the next chapter.